Okay, ladies and gentlemen, if you're at home, then we have a second package that I just handed out, and the online uh, files are there for you, so you can either download them and follow along, or you can just use this as a, um, as a template and write everything out on another piece of paper. Either way, I'll have a copy for you on Tuesday if you so desire, but you need to do your homework on this well before then. So let's flip over. So, now we're back to 7.2. So we've gone from 7.1 to 7.3 and now back to 7.2. We're going to do some common factoring. Now, to factor means, what to, we need to know exactly what factor means. Factor means to express something as a product of two or more terms. So, to factor a number like 15, means to break it up into its multiple. So to factor a number like 15 is 3 times 5, or 5 times 3. Maybe a number like 12 would be 4 times 3, or perhaps 6 times 2, or perhaps um, 2 times 2 times 3 times 2. But in any case, the concept of factoring is to take this number and to break it up into two or more. This one was two times two times three. So that's six. There you go. So this could be broken up into two factors. Here's two different factors. Here it is being broken up into three factors. What we're going to do is we're going to start taking polynomials and we're going to break them up. And we've already done that with different squares, with difference of squares. We've already seen that if I have something like this, it can be changed to that. Now, take into account, this is a polynomial, and then this has been broken down into two factors of the polynomial. And if I expand these, I'll go back to the polynomial. So expanding is this way. And factoring is this way. Okay, so sometimes we have to find the greatest common factor between two sets of terms. It's easy with numbers, sometimes it gets harder with variables. Now, this is jumping right into variables and numbers. Before we do that, let me ask you what is the greatest common factor between 8 and 12? So in other words, what factor is common in both these two numbers? Well, 8 could be broken down into 2 times 4, and 12 can be broken down into 4 times 3. So the greatest common factor is the 4. Do you see that? And that's how that works. Sometimes numbers don't have a common factor, like 8 and 15. 8 can be broken down into 4 times 2, 8 can be broken down into 2 times 2 times 2. 15 can be broken down into 5 times 3. They don't have any common factors at all. So when we talk about a common factor, we're talking about a factor that they both have in common. Now, let's go back to the 8 example again. 8 could also be 2 times 2 times 2. And 12 can be 2 times 2 times 3. So they also have a common factor of 2. But it's not the greatest common factor. 4 is larger than 2, and that's what we call the GCF, the greatest common factor. All right, so we've got 6 and 24. The question is, what is the greatest common factor between those two terms? Well. The nice thing is 6x and 24, 24 can be 6 times 4. So the first term is 6 times x. The second term can be factored into 6 times 4. They both have a common factor of 6. So the greatest common factor of these two is actually 6. They also have a common factor of 2, but it's not the greatest common factor. What about 10x squared and 15? 
Well, let's think about what 10x squared is. 10x squared can be changed into 5 times 2 times x times x. So what I've done is I've factored 10x squared into four different factors. 15x can be factored into 5, 3, and 1x. Now go and look for the common factors. Well, there's a 5 in the first one and a 5 in the second one, so that's a common factor. There's an x in the first one. In fact, there's two x's, but there's an x in the second one, so that's common. So the greatest common factor between these two is going to be 5x. I have a 5x in 10x squared, and I have a 5x in 15x. And if you want to look what that looks like, this is 5x times 2x, and this one is 5x times 3. Those are my common factor in both of them. Trust me, this gets easier as we go on. So the next one is 6x cubed, negative 12x squared, and 18x. So the question is, what's common in all of them? So this is what you do. First, find a number that goes into all of the numbers. 2 goes into 6, 2 goes into 12, and 2 goes into 18. But is it the largest common factor? No. 3 goes into 3, sorry, 3 goes into 6, 3 goes into 12, and 3 goes into 8. But is that the largest common factor? No. 6 goes into 6. 6 goes into 12, 6 goes into 18. So the greatest common factor in terms of numbers is 6. Now, what about the variables? How many x's are there being multiplied together when it's x to the 3? Three of them. There's two x's being multiplied together in this one, and there's only one x. So how many x's are in common in all three? Just one. I can only take one x out of all three of them. This one has more, this one has more, but this one only has one, so that's the most I can take out of all three. <clears throat> okay, example two. Find the greatest common factor, then write the binomial in factored form. Check your answer by expanding. So the question is 10x equal or 10x minus 15. So the greatest common factor, what's the largest number that'll come out of 10 and come out of 15? Lucas, you got it. Now this has an x, but that doesn't have an x. So the x is not a common factor. So when I go to factor this, I take a 5 and I put it on the outside, because that's what I'm going to factor out of both of them. 10x divided by 5 leaves me with 2x. 15 divided by 5 leaves me with 3. And I have to keep that negative because there's the negative in the spot above it. So let's expand this to make sure that it's right. So here's my check. I'm going to take the 5, multiply it by 2x, and get 10x. I'm going to take the 5 and multiply it by negative 3, and I'm going to get negative 15. That is the same answer I started with. So notice how I have factored this polynomial, this binomial. Another way to write this, just in case you wanted to, is to write it like this. And that way you can really see that there's two factors here. Most of the time we won't write the brackets around the 5, though. We'll just leave it as 5. All right, the next one. I've got 20x minus 12x squared. I need to know what's the greatest common factor, first of all, in the numbers. So I can take a 4 out of 20. I can take a 4 out of 12. I've got 1x and 20x, and I've got 2x's in x squared. So I can take an x out of both of them. That means my answer is going to be 4x bracket. 20 divided by 4 is 5 x divided by x is no more x's. 12 divided by 4 is 3. 
x squared divided by x is x. Now let's see if that makes sense. We'll do a check. 4x times 5, negative 3x. 4x times 5 is 20x. 4x times negative 3x is negative 12x squared. It works. Now, see this formal check? You don't have to do it. But you really should do it in your head. You should check and go 4x times 5 is 20x. 4x times negative 3x is negative 12x. And that's just a good thing to do all the time. Example 2c, I've got a negative x, 3x squared plus a 12x. Now when there's a negative in the beginning, when there's a negative at the first term, we tend to factor out a negative as well. So what this is going to look like is the greatest common factor, I'm going to common factor out a negative 3 out of both of them. And I'm going to factor out an x out of both of them. That's going to leave me with negative 3x bracket x minus 4. You can check that. You might want to put brackets around it so you don't lose that negative. And what this becomes is negative 3x squared, positive 12x, and that's what I did start with. So it's right. Now, if you didn't common factor out the negative, it wouldn't necessarily be wrong, but it would look like this. Your GCF would be 3x instead of negative 3x, and you would get 3x negative x plus 4. It's not wrong. It just looks weird. We don't like it. We would prefer this number or this term to be positive. If you got this far and wanted to continue to factor out a negative, you could. You would factor out a negative 1. That would change this. Negative x divided by negative 1 is positive x. Positive 4 divided by negative 1 is negative 4. And then put these two together. And you end up what we had when our GCF was in fact the negative 3x. So it's the same answer. I'm going to stop the video there and we'll be right back.